Supreme, Mr. Olympia, where he looks absolutely insane. Michael Crizzo, every time he does it, is one of the biggest, freakiest, most 3D vascular looking guy in the lineup. He is the true definition of what we describe to be a mass monster. One of the biggest guys in this lineup. Has some of the biggest arms in this lineup. I think arguably one of the best frontable biceps in this lineup. This is the type. Who's your favorite rapper all the time? Ice Cube. Yeah. Suicide. Ice Cube got better. Entering this set. Sure. 
Kill confirmed. This is real shit. You know what? A 60? KG probably up there, man. I say, the man you play with in the Olympics. There's a best card here. I think them the two dudes that we already play with, they probably up in that era of where they can where they can go get it like that. And they are just do some stupid stuff. Them was one of the two best dudes I ever played and jumped high. And when we was on that, that, that video, when he went up and dunked on that dude, when me and you was sitting out there, we looking at that, me and you both had our eyes wide open on that picture. That boy went up and up like Superman. I said, he kept going, going up. And he <laughs> said, dunk it out, man, man. You remember, so them two right there, they gotta be up there. They gotta be up there. In the world of bodybuilding, there are legends. And then there's Sergio Oliver, the myth, the man most genetically gifted bodybuilder of all time. Three-time Mr. Olympia from 1967. McEnroe got slapped all over the lot when he said about... Let's go this video over none other than the seven times Mr. Olympia for me. I'm gonna say the last one of his kind. And let me explain that quickly. He won the Olympia in seven straight years. And if you... Mm, you help guide me. After working out for years, this woman noticed that she started to look a bit too strong in her outfits. Listen, you are too tall. This looks stupid. That's stupid. It looks stupid. Stay up. Even so. Stop working out like a man, bitch. Worry. We will unravel 
why it's one of the enemy's greatest deceptions that keep us from living a full Yeah, not this life time, you bastard. Christ. I'm also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. In the book of Matthew 6, We've verse 34, Jesus tells us, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is activated. In this profound teaching, Jesus challenges us to live the in the present, trusting fully in his provision and care. placing our trust in him. We can navigate the complexities of the present moment with grace, knowing that he holds Enemy our tomorrows in his hands. My dear friends, area. have you ever stopped to ponder? Why do we worry? Why do we let this crippling emotion seize our hearts and minds? When the Almighty has already told us that by worrying, we cannot add a single hour to our lives. Friends, we need to unpack and unmask the deception behind worry. It's more than a mere bad habit. It's a tool the enemy uses to make us ineffective, anxious and distant from the peace and joy that God intends for us. When we worry, we're doubting God's goodness. We are doubting his power and his plan for us. We may not realize it, and we may not say it out loud that he's down. Our problems are bigger than God, or that God is indifferent to our struggles. Think of the Israelites in the wilderness. They God's The parting of the Red Sea. Water from the rock. And yet, they worried about entering the promised land. They let the fear of giants, and potential battles fill their minds. Ignoring the fact that God had already promised them victory. Their worry led to a lack of faith, which in turn led to food and unnecessary wandering in the desert. This is exactly what the enemy wants. They keep us wandering in the wilderness of worry. He wants us to be so lost in our fears and anxieties that we can't see the promised land that God has prepared for us. The enemy knows that a worried believer is powerless. And what a shame it would be for the enemy to know, and for us not to. When we are consumed by worry, our prayers become weak, our faith wavers, and our joy diminishes. We become spiritually paralyzed, unable to experience the fullness of God's grace. So, the time has come to unpack and unmask this deception. It's time to expose it for what it is. A precious strategy to keep us ineffective, anxious, and the glorious peace and joy that God intends for each and every one of us. We will explore seven essential points that will help us understand why we should stop worrying and how we can achieve God's peace. As we explore the insights and actionable steps, that the Bible provides. Let us set our hearts and minds on breaking free from this snare of worry, guided by the everlasting truth and unchanging promises of God's word. Number one, worry distracts us from our purpose. The apostle in his letter to the Philippians, advises the anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Worry is a tool the enemy uses to distract us from our God-given purpose. So seeds of doubt, making us question whether God will fulfill his promises. Think about Peter walking on water. He's down by worry. He lifted him up. Similarly, worry is taking us into the depths of despair when we should be walking by the challenges of life. Every moment we spend worrying is a moment 
Reloaded. Lost. Hunting our neighbors. Hunting our neighbors. Our most importantly, and growing closer to God. No Friends, accomplished. it's time we shift our focus back to God. Worry often hides behind a mask of responsibility. We think that by worrying, we are somehow being responsible. But there's a stark difference between being responsible and worrying. Responsibility leads to action, while worry leads to stagnation. We don't want to be like the servant who hid his talent in the ground, too worried to do anything productive with it. When we understand that our primary responsibility is to trust and obey God, worry begins to lose its grip on us. Let us be more like the Apostle Paul who despite his numerous trials, rejoiced in the Lord and was content in every situation because his eyes were focused on Christ. Indeed, it's worth noting that worry, in many ways, can become a barrier between us and our divine calling. It not only clouds our vision, but also diminishes our spiritual strength. My friends, when our minds are preoccupied with fears of the unknown, or the weight of past bad decisions or choices, we can't fully appreciate or partake in the blessings of the present. But how wonderful it is to know that God provides a way out of this cycle. As we cast our burdens upon him, we receive his peace in return. This is the kind of peace that surpasses all understanding guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. So, instead of allowing worry to derail our purpose, let's lean into God's promises, for he is faithful to see us through every storm. The journey might be challenging, but with our eyes fixed on him, we can confidently march towards our divine destiny, free from the shackles of unnecessary worry. Number two, Worry is a barrier to faith. Jesus tells us in Matthew 21, verse 22, and whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Worry and faith cannot coexist in the same heart. When we worry, we are essentially telling God, I don't trust you enough to handle this situation. When the Israelites who wandered in the desert, their worry became a barrier to their faith. Prevented them from entering the promised land. They saw giants in the land and felt like grasshoppers, not realizing that their worry had magnified their problems and minimized their God. When they worried, we become like the skies who brought back a bad report, allowing our fears to overshadow God's promises. Instead, let's strive to be like Joshua and Caleb, who saw the same giants but had a different perspective because they trusted God. Let's make it a daily practice to lay down our worries at the foot of the cross, allowing our faith to rise. Faith comes from hearing the word of God. So, when worry creeps in, let's open our Bibles and let's dig deep into God's promises. Also listen to our daily Jesus devotional videos about worry. Doing this will help to restore your faith. By doing so, we can break down the barrier of worry and let our faith grow. Number three, worry robs us of today's joy. Solomon, in all his wisdom, tells us in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 12, I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives. Worry Change your is a thief that robs us of today's joy and tomorrow's peace. It confines us to a prison of what is and might have been, thereby increasing our ability to enjoy the present moment. When Jesus visited Martha and Mary, Martha was so engrossed in her worries about the preparations that she failed to recognize the joy of having Jesus in her home. Mary, on the other hand, chose what was better to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to him. Sometimes our worries about the future, or even about doing good works, can prevent us from experiencing the joy of being in God's presence. We often worry about things that are out of our control. 
This not only robs us of our joy, but also affects those around us. We can't fully love, serve, or witness to others when we are consumed by worry. Let's free ourselves from this self-imposed prison by handing over our worries to God and focusing on what we can control. Imagine how different our lives would be if we took Solomon's words to heart and decided to rejoice and do good instead of worrying. You have After all, to deploy. God has assured us that he is in control and that should fill us with immense joy. Number four, worry drains our physical and spiritual energy. Isaiah 40, verse 31, reminds us that those who wait on the Lord will their strength. They shall be counted with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Worry, on the other hand, drains us both physically and spiritually. It's like carrying a heavy load on a long journey. Eventually, we'll run out of steam. Using drill charge. Consider Elijah, a powerful prophet who challenged the prophets of Baal. Enemy saw fire active. come down Enemy from heaven. Yet, when Jezebel threatened his life, he was filled with worry and despair. He was so afraid that he wished for death. If Elijah, in the area. a man of God, was not immune to the draining power of worry. But let's not forget the rest of Elijah's story. God did not abandon him. He provided for him, spoke to him, and renewed his strength. Just like Elijah, when we cast our worries onto the Lord, we can find new strength and face the challenges ahead. Worry drains the life out of us, making us weak and vulnerable targets for the enemy. When we're wary, we're less resistant to temptations and less effective than our God given tasks. Therefore, let's need Isaiah's advice to wait upon the Lord. For in him, you'll find the strength to carry on. Number five, worry leads to unnecessary actions and decisions. Proverbs 3, verses 5 to 6, instructs us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Robert Wilson. What makes things even special? For Ilka, it's making her family and friends feel welcome. Not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. Sometimes, worry pushes us into unnecessary actions and making poor decisions. When we try to take matters into our own hands without consulting God, we often end up in undesirable situations. Think about Abram and Sarah. Worried about their childlessness and taking matters into their own hands. They devised a plan involving Hagar, which led to much strife and complication. Their worry and impatience led to decision that had long-lasting consequences. How many times have we made a poor choice? Because we were anxious and didn't trust God. The decisions made in worry are rarely the right ones because they don't come from a place of peace or wisdom. God promises to guide us. Trust him. Therefore, before making any decision, let's consult God, acknowledge Him, and let Him direct our paths. By doing this, we avoid the pitfalls that come from decisions made in haste and worry. Let's make a commitment today to always seek God's counsel and wisdom in every situation, rather than making decisions clouded by worry. Number six, worry is disobedience to God's command. In first, Peter 5, verse 7, we are directly told, cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. If God is telling us not to worry, but to cast our cares upon him, then worry becomes an act of disobedience. We are essentially ignoring God's command to trust him. Disobedience puts a strain on our relationship with God, just as it did with Saul, the first king of Israel. Saul was commanded to wait for Samuel, but he worried about losing the battle and took matters into his own hands. His disobedience
obedience cost him his kingdom. Let's not allow worry to cost us our spiritual inheritance. Request your if recall. God cares for the birds in the that sky and the flowers in the field, how much more will he care for us, his children? Disobedience to worry is a lack of trust in God's care and provisions for us. Let's remind ourselves daily Request that escort. God's plans this for us are to prosper and not to harm us, and to give us hope. By obeying God's command to cast our cares upon him, we are aligning ourselves with his will, which is the safest and most peaceful place to be. And number seven, worry gives the enemy a foothold. James 4 verse 7 tells us to resist the devil and he will flee from you. Worry can be a foothold that the enemy uses to climb into other areas of our lives. Once we give in to worry, it becomes easier for the enemy to introduce other destructive habits or thoughts such as fear, depression, and Any doubt. UAV overhead. Think about Job. He admitted, mindset. the thing I greatly feared has come upon me. Our UAV Job's worry the gave area. the enemy an opportunity to bring calamity upon him. While Job's trials were part of a greater divine plan, and his faith was ultimately affirmed, it serves as a warning for us. We should not let worry or fear dictate our lives and give the enemy a way to attack us. An essential part of resisting the devil has to do with resisting worry. The enemy wants nothing more than for us to be paralyzed by worry, effectively sidelining us from God's purposes for our lives. However, when we resist worry by placing our trust in God, we're putting on the armor of God, making it difficult for the enemy to gain a foothold. Let's be vigilant and guard our hearts and minds against worry. Find the new balance transfer card at Credit Karma. Use pay 0% interest in the yard. Which could mean big financial savings. Growing drift. Little financial savings. Trust the cap. Into a Credit Karma. Find your card today. Fuck around. Fuck around. Using drill charge. About what you call a dinner party. Because dessert deserves to go first every now and then. Expanse Club. Let's get together. Covering your six. One minute left. Each time worry tries to creep in. Let's counteract it with God's promises and by actively trusting in him. By doing so. We're resisting Three the nine. devil, and according to God's word, he will flee from us. My friends, remember, worry is not just a harmless habit. It's a destructive force Throwing that distracts drill. us from our purpose, weakens our faith, steals our joy, drains our energy, leads us to poor decisions, becomes an act of disobedience, and gives the enemy a foothold in our lives. And I know, Oh God, get one But remember, when God speaks, the are Why are you fucking serious with us? It's not just a casual Why? suggestion. Why? Why? It's a testament to how he created us with inner strength and resilience. God already gave us the ability to oh my God. <laughs> the to the potential in us, even when we I like the ourselves. Whether you believe it or not, worry is a blessing. So let's actively reject the grip of worry and warmly welcome the serene peace of God into our hearts. Stop worrying. God is bigger than any problem that you may face. Trust God. He's in control and he is faithful. Now, to all those within the sound of 